Welcome to the Chateau de Lalande, a 16th century chateau in the heart of France. Join us each day of Advent as we get this 19 bedroom home ready for Christmas. We'll be cooking, decorating and discovering Christmas traditions from all over the world. Welcome to Christmas at Lalande. Hi and welcome to another day of Advent at Lalande and today we're going to start getting the guest bedrooms ready for Christmas starting with this one and this is where my aunt and uncle are going to come and stay and that's Amory's parents and they've never spent Christmas in France with me before so this is a huge year for me and I want the room to be absolutely perfect so of course we need a little tree I want them to feel Christmassy from the moment they walk in. So I've been collecting baubles in like rust colours and like burgundies, etc. I like it. These are the ones that we bought new this year. Okay. But there's way more from last year that I already bought and when we made the garland here. And so what I, you're saying is we have to go back up to the freezing cold attic? Yes, also to get the lights for the tree. All right, okay, let's go. I feel flush with pride every time oh. we come up here because I labelled them so well. Yeah. Well... I started last year when we took everything down. Yeah, but look, I put them in here. Copper and burgundy. Yes, that's what I called them. <laughs> Copper such burgundy Christmas decorations. What can I say? We're a great team. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave you looking for ends of light. I don't know why I felt when everything else was so well organised. And I am going to get a skirt for the tree. All right. All trees must have pretty skirts. <laughs> Oh, hang on. I have found stockings. Let's take a couple of stockings for them. They'll be so pretty on the mantelpiece. How about Christmas cushion? Christmas cushion. Christmas cushion. Definitely. Stockings. Right, let's choose two beautiful stockings. That one could be nice. That's a nice small one. I made that one myself years ago. I found so many stockings, really beautiful ones. For example, look at this one. Isn't that That'd beautiful? That'd be lovely in there. Yes, but in fact, it's quite big. And these two, these were gifts. So many lovely gifts. They'd be beautiful too. Duh. But I think those are all too big. And okay. I made some several years ago. I made one for each bedroom door of the whole oh, chateau. That's sweet. And that is these. So there's the one I showed you over here, which I think is a perfect colour mm -hmm. for that room. There we go. We need a bit of an iron. A little bit of an iron, because we don't want to fill it with too many things, just some little treats and snacks. We just need to oh, choose one of my beautiful. other ones. The red one's really pretty. Oh yes, that's got the fabric that yes. you like, the little bee fabric. Any little off cuts of fabrics I had. I love that fabric. I used to make these. They're lovely fabrics. I think this one goes quite well with that one. Oh yes, because look. Oh, nice. Yes, those two together. Has to be. So that could be from my uncle and this can be from my aunt. I want it to be really snug for them because I actually grew up with my aunt and uncle. We all lived together with my parents as well. And so my aunt is like a second mother to me. And I'm very sad that mummy and Percy can't be here. And look, this is making me sad that these beautiful stockings were sent for them last year. Percy and Isabel. This lovely tree napkin for their tea table. You could put it on the little uh, tray. Yes, that'll be perfect. Okay, so I'll put all of these away. And as I was doing this, I looked into the other Christmas cupboard and spotted the vintage nativity from Davy. Mm. Why oh. don't we make a little nativity for them? Yeah, that'd be lovely. Yes. My aunt is not going to want a stuffed ferret in her Christmas room. Why not? Who He's wants very... a stuffed ferret in their Christmas room? I do. Okay. As does Sabina. As long as he has a Christmas hat on, though. Yes. But not for this room. No. Okay, so no, he's got to leave. Do you want to take the clock away as well? Because then we could put the nativity there. I love that idea. Yes. Okay, so I'll put the nativity out mm -hmm. on the mantelpiece. And right. do you want to start on the tree? Sure. Yes. We are really blessed with nativity scenes. Oh, there's a little light with it. Great. Really cute if we can find a way of getting that plugged in. I'm going to be having all the fun setting this up along here whilst you do the lights. All right. I don't like doing the lights that much, so thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> the sheep are always my favourite bit. Now we can people the stable, and by people I mean animal up that stable. Ooh, okay, now I'm confused. The ox and the ass are facing the same way. Can't the ass face the other way? Yeah, but then he's turning away a little bit in a slightly grumpy manner. You know what? 
Maybe they're keeping each other warm, like Ooh. that. And he's That's right really there. sweet. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Maybe I'll put him in front. Okay, I can, I'm can. i going to spend too long on this, aren't I? Yes. Yeah, that's... He's a bit more... We've got, literally got the entire shelter to decorate for Christmas. Yes, but we've got to get the ox and the ass the <laughs> right way round. Yes, so yes. it's game over. I do think that Chantal will be very upset if they were not facing the correct way. Okay, I've changed my ox and ass formation. I think this works. We have located a hole in the back of the manger for the light. I'm going to thread that through now. Christmas essentials have been collected. Speaker for Christmas music and extension <laughs> lead. Ah, we need to buy a ton more extension leads. Yes. So this one I bought at Emma's for like 10 euros, which is quite a lot. For and I Emma's. vaguely remember saying there was no need for that. Yes, um, but I bought it specifically for in this room. Because... It just fits so perfectly. Yeah. Because obviously that fireplace needs a lot of work. This bit yeah, the in inside is awful. But more importantly, the chimney doesn't go up to the... Uh... No, it can't be lit anyway. <laughs> but that makes it much tidier in the meantime. Yes. I managed to get the little light on and it's so cute. It's like a little flickering flame. I guess it represents the light being cast by Joseph's lantern. Either that or the start of a fire in the hay manger, which would be more of a concern. But let's presume that's not what's going on. I have come back up to the freezing attic, this time to look for fabric for the little tablecloth on the bedside tables. And although I'd rather be downstairs in the warmth, I do love coming to this cupboard. This is a joy to look in. Now, what would work? Hmm, not too sure which colours to go for. Maybe that would be pretty. I would have liked something a little bit more neutral because the wallpaper is quite full on in there. Maybe simple pink could work. I'll take a couple of those as well and we can try different things. And what about these lovely greens? I don't know if they'll be big enough, but that could be very pretty. I have lots and lots to choose from, so let's go and look in place. So, Philip, you quite like the green. Oh, I That's see. not going to no work. That is not going to be long enough. I think it would be nice if it actually came to the floor. Now, do we have enough of any of these? I think we could do it with the pink. Okay. Because we've got two more of these. Honestly, the pink's not bad with the bedding. It's not bad with the walls either. It's no. Picking out this pink. Or oh, there's this one. And the oh, other I think that's clashes. too much. Yeah. I love it. I love this fabric. I love the fabric too. That was the one beautiful. that we were thinking about using for the background, remember? Yeah. When we were making that. Beautiful. But I think we want something a lot more neutral. It just marries way better with the wallpaper. It feels warmer already. The minute you don't see those bare legs. Mm. I'm doing a styling job with the tree. I've got three baubles on. I can tell. Yeah. I mean, we're nearly there. <laughs> So you've brought little lampshades? Yes, they came from the stairwell downstairs. Yes. And the stairwell's got eight lights, but only four lampshades. Okay, so we can <laughs> use these somewhere <laughs> yes. else. Yeah. Is this so that we see the little light in the manger more? Yes, and I think just the light is slightly warmer. Yeah, it's definitely going to be more festive like that. Oh, it looks so much better. I love the glow from it. Right? We're warmer. Yeah, snug. I'm going to want to move into this room at the end of the day, aren't I? <laughs> Is it your favourite? It's always my favourite. The room I've just done is always <laughs> my favourite. Christmas bear. I forgot that Christmas bear was in with these. So is there something significant about this? You know, Christmas bear, bear was only from M&S in England. Okay. It wasn't some amazing exotic thing I bought on holiday. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't stop him from being completely awesome. I love these. These are this year's. Yes. So Christmas bear has had babies. <laughs> <laughs> Little festive baby bears. And I like this new selection for this year. Those are all the plastic ones I got. So those are the ones that Stephanie is allowed to put on. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. <laughs> <laughs> because I use them as a weapon. Yes. <laughs> the first baby bear is going onto the tree and I think should be quite near to mummy bear. <laughs> well, that's just the cutest thing in the world. Look, I put them facing each other. <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> Oh yes, I forgot about these. Oh, that's beautiful. I like the mercury glass feel. Mm, me too. I still want to have a garland in here. I'm thinking instead of the mantelpiece, mm -hmm. we could go mantelpiece or we could go over the uh, wardrobe, which we haven't done. I love that. Yeah? Yeah, I've always wanted to do that. I feel like we've spent a really long time focusing on the tree mm. and not that much time focusing on the rest of the room. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, we have to do the rest. What I think we need to do is finish a tree. Maybe we should go to Action tomorrow. Try and look for a tree topper. Tree topper, we don't have a tree and topper. maybe some extra uh, balls from the garden. Yeah, I think maybe carry on tomorrow. Day two and we're back in the bedroom and things have got a little bit worse before they're about to get better. I think it is really important to have lots of cushions at winter because it makes it feel much warmer and snugger and luxurious. So I found all of these cushions that I think work really well together. Philip went out and bought a tree topper. It's going to be glorious. The only I could find it wasn't white or gold. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no, it's good. I like it. Good. It's a perfect colour. But possibly the thing I am most looking forward to doing is turning this into a bonbonniere. Now, this porcelain box is one of Philip's prized possessions. He absolutely loves this. One of the first things I bought when I moved here. Yeah, yeah, in the local antique shop in La Chatte. Yes. So don't you worry, you carry on with the garland. I am on the chocolates. <laughs> okay. We have these lovely fruit pastes and chocolates and as these are a little bit sticky I've put down some scalloped edge tissue paper keep the base clean and now I'm just going to arrange everything in here oh, so pretty oh look at the little pear <laughs> raspberry and of course wouldn't be complete without a strawberry those are my favorites <laughs> I like the orange ones I don't want these on this half yeah, chocolate on one side and... Yeah, chocolate's on the other side. I bought some other things. Oh, there's more to go well, in here. What else did you get? These are the orange ones. I think so. I wasn't sure, but they look very pretty. Tell you what, I should find out. <laughs> I'm sorry, by the way, about the earmuffs, but... Why oh, sorry? I bought them for you. Philip bought them for me today, so I'm celebrating that purchase by wearing them. Mm. Orange? Orange. That is wonderful. And the earmuffs are terrible. Are you making a little wall with the orange peel thing? Yes, that's the divide. <laughs> it's like East and West Berlin. But it's just so pretty. I hope that my aunt will be delighted when I'm she sure opens she'll love it. it. I mean, look with that lid as well. Oh. And the even better news, Philip, there's just a few left that we can polish off when decorating. Mm, I see what you did there. <laughs> I said that one. This one? I think so. Maybe but it's not the same pink as the. No, it's different to that. I think this one. Yeah, that looks better with it. Yeah. But I'm not sure if the pink cushion works then. We went for these pillows in the end. This colour brings everything together really nicely. And I have made a little pile of books that I would love to find if I went to a guest room somewhere. So we have Chateau Life. This is a beautiful book. Late 18th and 19th century textiles, because I know my aunt will love that. Life in the French country house. And then this stunning book. And this was written by the great grandmother of Marc, of Marc and Amy at Chateau de Rosière. Such a beautiful book. I think my aunt will enjoy that. Then we have the 12 Birds of Christmas that I think my uncle will like. And just a little notepad and pen in case I want to take any notes. Philip, this is an absolute triumph. Oh, thank you. No, it's truly beautiful what you're doing here. Is there still more going on? Yes. So what I'm trying to do is I've got some... Like here, the tiny gold one, mm -hmm. the tiny red one. I'm trying to see where there's color lacking. So the brown is really nice, but I'm trying to not have too many baubles that are the same together, like more spread out, because I only have four of the red ones here. Because I've spaced them out, it looks like... Yeah, you can't tell. That's true, actually. Right? Yeah, so you space them out nicely. That's kind of what I've been trying to do. The gold one, what do you think? Over there. Too many browns yeah. together. Let's see. Hello. Perfect. Good. Set up a little tea station. This is absolutely critical. So they have tea and coffee, shortbread, nice little tea set. And then here, which I think will be even more popular, especially with my uncle, is a little bar. We have whiskey Rica, which is his favourite drink, and an Earl Grey gin that I thought they'd quite enjoy trying. We'll just have to make sure they have little bottles of tonic. And Ricles. Now, this is great to have at Christmas. This is very high alcohol, 80% and it's mint alcohol. One little drop of this on a sugar cube is a miracle to aid digestion. So at Christmas, very important, you can get this in every pharmacy in France, and we will just replenish the sugar at the last minute, but they're coming next week, so I don't want to do that till the last minute. I've just finished sorting out the bedside tables, and finally found the perfect moment to use Chateau de la Ruche's candle Rebecca and Tim sent this to us after our visit. Relaxing lavender. It smells so, so good. So I'm going to put that there for my aunt 
there's the matches, three little books of love poetry, and then on either bedside table, see we have a glass, but also there's a little Christmas book on each one. So on this side, letters from Father Christmas. These were written by Tolkien to his children every Christmas, and they're beautiful, and he did the most extraordinary illustrations with them as well. If you can see that. And it's, it's so beautiful, and what I love is that Father Christmas had really shaky handwriting. Because he's old. Yeah, he did that each time, every year. And the letters got longer and longer over the years. We went crazy with the cushions in the end, and I decided that this looked far better at the base of the bed, with of course a hot water bottle cover. Absolutely critical. There's also a heater in here. And on this side of the bed, I went for a royal Christmas, which is all about how the royal family have celebrated Christmas in the past, which I thought might be quite fun. So a little bit of Christmas reading if they want it. Of course, critically, the sweets. Oh, mustn't touch them. <coughs> Close the sweets. Step away from the sweets, <laughs> Step Stephanie. away, don't even think <laughs> about them. And then here, the Chapel of La Lande with a little battery powered light inside and tissues, obviously, I've sort of hidden them around the side. I've got some hand cream, because in this weather, that's pretty important. And at the last minute, I will come and put some foliage from the garden in here. I think that's, that's pretty much it. We've so nearly finished. We're just about to do the grand reveal of the room. And we thought, we're not sure we like this on the mantelpiece. And my grandmother always used to put the nativity in the fireplace. As my grandmother is the mother of my aunt who's coming, Philip thought it might be really nice to do what she used to do and put it in the fireplace. Which means that I was right and you didn't need to buy this in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> that's my takeaway. Yes, because we don't do B&B. &B, yeah, <laughs> that's my takeaway. <laughs> okay, we've done it. We've moved the nativity. I think it looks really, really good. And look at the flickering light in the nativity. Uh, it's almost like a fire. I think the pièce de résistance, to be fair, Philip, is your garland. Oh, thank you. Well, that's one ready for Christmas. Few more to go. I hope this has given you ideas as to how to prepare your guest rooms for Christmas if you're lucky enough to have guests this year, because I know not everybody can this year, but hopefully next year we will all be able to have guests in our home again. Lots and lots of love to all of you from Leland and Merry, Merry Advent. <laughs>